What's going on guys and welcome to yet another day in the life vlog. Um, I've noticed that the last two sort of like social media marketing agency day in the life vlogs uh, are performing really well for some reason like at the time they got like a couple hundred views and and I just checked the I think one of those got 10,000 views and the other one's got 6,000 and both of those vlogs were like a well over a year ago so I thought let's actually refilm another sort of day in the life vlog um, show you guys like what's changed uh, you know just bring you guys along with with me on my day um, we've got a couple of social media marketing meetings uh, for those of you that don't know my name is Joshua Daniel George uh, for those of you that are new to the channel obviously uh, Joshua Daniel George I own a social media marketing agency where we help businesses grow by basically setting up Facebook ads for them. Alongside that, I also have my own online course called Lifestyle Design Mastery, where I basically teach you my business model, how to set it up, how to get clients, how to automate it, and how to basically live life on your own terms. It's now quarter to 11, which means in 15 minutes, I'll probably be getting my breakfast. I've got a meeting at one o'clock, a meeting at two o'clock, and a meeting at three o'clock. Um, all three potential clients. In between those uh, calls, uh, before and after the calls, I'll probably just get um, a load of work done, looking at the current clients' advertisements, looking at the campaigns, making sure everything is still profitable for all our clients. Um, other than that, just bring you guys along with me on my day. Got up at seven on the dot. Um, I'll actually quickly show you guys what my morning setup is like. So I've got this ring light, which basically mimics like sunrise. Um, half past six, this slowly starts brightening up, and then seven o'clock, basically this all lights up, and it's it's like it's like basically you just get kind of natural. Uh, you wake up naturally because it's it's like the sun has uh, risen, and uh, yeah, all well, that's it. Another thing I have is I use an app called Alarmy, uh, which is my alarm app, and basically what I need to do is I need to scan this barcode um, before the alarm actually um, you know turns off. So I need to physically get out of bed, uh, walk these few steps, then scan that barcode, and then from there, basically, you know, I'm, I'm out of bed, so I'm awake. Um, quick room tour, bedroom, and guys, this is where I work from. This is my desk, uh, slash home office, slash bedroom. Everything is all in the one room. Um, and yes, guys, I run a six-figure social media marketing agency from my own bedroom. I don't know for a lot of you guys, that may sound a bit like far-fetched and out of there, but, you know, this is very much possible for you as well. Um, I'll explain a bit more about the social media marketing agency business model um, in a bit. First, breakfast, and then prepare for the first uh, meeting with a potential client. Also, as I am like, seated for most of the day, I like to get a workout in three times a week. Uh, today was an off day, so I went for a morning walk. <laughs> Listen to a podcast, uh, walk about 40 minutes long, now I'm back home again. And uh, yeah, that's basically everything that's been going on up until now. So now you guys are up to date. I can have breakfast in peace and I'll see you guys in a bit. Hi guys, so that is breakfast uh, done. I have got another two hours until the first meeting actually. So what I'm going to be doing now is just answering a few of your comments in the free Facebook community called the Lifestyle Design Community. If you're not already in it, make sure you check it out. Like I said, it's completely free of charge to everyone who is uh, sort of like-minded, you know, has entrepreneurial tendencies or wants to live a laptop lifestyle is in that group. I'm all just sharing ideas, connecting, and you know, there's a real sense of community in there. Everyone's helping each other out. Um, more often than not, when I go to reply to a comment, there's already like five other people that have already replied to the comment, but I just like to stay active in and try and help out as much as I possibly can. So if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure you do. Hi guys, it's a little later now and I'm preparing for my first meeting of the day. And what I do is, uh, well basically people, they book a call with me. Uh, we run paid traffic for the agency. Uh, people can book a call and then if they want to book a call, they can book off a time slot in my calendar. Uh, but to be able to do that, they need to answer a few questions like, what is your website called? What is your company called? Um, telephone number, email address, you know, all the contact info, but also what their budget is. So I can sort of see, you know, is this going to be a right fit because if a, if a um you know a client or a company has only got a budget of let's say 800 pounds a month then they can't you know there's no way they can afford and our retainer and the our budget as well so then i just cancel the call 
Um, but this client has got the budget for this. So what I do, I can't actually show the screen, but what I basically do is I click on the website, I open up the website. The first thing I check is have they got the Facebook pixel installed, which basically tracks data of the people that are on the website. From there, I go down to the contact section of the page and I check if the Facebook or the social media is on the page. Um, in this case, it isn't. I have only got their email address. So what I'll do is um, they've got quite a quite a unique name. So I'm guessing I'll be able to find that um, on Facebook. There we go. And yes, there it is. Okay, UK based, which is great. And then from there, I go to the, I look on the right hand side of Facebook and I go down to page transparency. Why? Because that allows me to see if they are running ads. Um, this page is not running any ads, okay, so they've got the budget, they're not running ads, and they have not got the Facebook pixel installed either. So I can provide a lot of value to this company because I can get that Facebook pixel installed for them and I can start running ads to the uh, website and, you know, towards, uh, this is going to be a lead generation company, I can see by, you know, from the look of it, uh, they want leads, not necessarily sales, because it's a service-based company, so what, I immediately know, okay, I am going to be running leads to this company, how can I do that, how can I provide the most value, you know, what, what do they actually want out of it, um, in this case, they'll probably want leads, so I'll run lead ads to a lead form, and then from there, they can basically follow up with the, with the potential customer for, for their, um, company and that is basically how I prepare for the uh, sales meetings I used to be really be really nervous about it and to have like a script that I follow and stuff like that now it's much more relaxed it's much more um, you know informal I just um, I used to do it through Skype and Zoom now I just literally call them up on my phone on WhatsApp um, I do sit at my desk because I record all my calls on Zoom uh, for two reasons I like to look back at um, how I do the sales, you know, uh, to improve upon, you know, to see what could have, what could I have done better or what did go well. And I also upload the um, the call into the Facebook mastermind of the course. So people that are enrolled in the course can see, you know, how I actually do the sales. Um, so rather than them giving them a script, I actually show them firsthand, you know, live um, how the like the meeting and how the call actually goes. But that's enough rambling on for now. That was a three minute, uh, you know, three minute talk. So I'm gonna prepare for this and I'll show you guys a little snippet of the call. Calls are not currently being connected to this number. Okay, okay. Okay, well that's the end of call number one. Um, we've got another call in an hour. Um, I will send them a follow-up email, maybe they've just written down the number wrong. Um, they have quite a big budget, so I am going to definitely follow up with them and see if I can get them on a call, on a, a Skype call, or anything like that. Because um, like I said, I know I can get results for them, and they've got the budget. So, um, you know, from the looks of it, it could be a win-win situation if I can get them on that call. So meeting number two is in one minute. Um, I've checked, I've basically added the number to my WhatsApp and yes, this person has got WhatsApp. Um, again, it's gonna be lead generation. This person has got a pixel and there's prices on the website as well. So I could already figure out, you know, um, how much or how many leads or clients I need to generate uh, for it to be profitable for her. So uh, just to give you a rough estimate, um, our service for lead generation starts at a thousand pounds a month and her cheapest um, package is 75 pounds and her most expensive one is 140, 165 pounds, sorry. So uh, worst case scenario, I only actually help her sell packages of uh, 75 pounds. That's the way I like to work it out my head. All I need to do is help her sell um, 13 packages a month and then basically she has broken even with our retainer and that is worst case scenario so that's less than one package every two days which is easy um, and that is like I said worst case scenario so this could be profitable for the both of us um, get on the call now let's see what she let's see what she says hi this is Josh George from Brampenier how are you today Right guys, so that was meeting number two. Um, I actually just cut off the meeting quite um, early on. I didn't feel it was the right fit. Um, this person basically has no clients coming in 
and this is her basically her only source of income and what that means basically is that if we were to work together um, it would be a struggle for her to actually be able to pay my retainer as well as uh, the ad budget which means that even if she could afford it um, she will be micromanaging every step I, uh, you know, every, everything I do and every step I make. So, uh, from a perspective of, you know, how I do, how I like to work, I don't, I do not like working where everyone is checking every single move I make. I'd rather um, be able to just go out and do my thing, and the business owner just basically trust me and let me run with it. And then at the end of the week, bi-weekly, end of the month, whatever. I give them a report with the results, here's the money coming in, this is how much I've earned you this month. Okay, and um, what I have learned over the last year or so is like, when I was just starting out, I probably would have tried my very best that even though she couldn't really afford it, to either lower my price or work something out to get them on board. Uh, regardless of knowing it's not gonna be a right fit or it will only last a month or anything like that. And I think this that is like a, you know, at, at the time when I was just starting out, I was negotiating from a point of scarcity and now that is no longer the case. You know, I know that um, I have, you know, I've got a bunch of clients at the moment. I know I've got a steady income coming in and that's not to brag, that's just, um, you know, what I've basically built up and worked very hard for. And I know that if we are not, you know, if we, it's not going to be a right fit and if I do not work together with this client, there's always going to be another client. There's always going to be another business that I can talk to that might be a much better fit. And I'd rather put my time and efforts into that business than trying to make it work with something that you can tell from day one, it's not um, it's not going to be a win-win situation. Because at the end of the day, that is what I strive for. A win-win situation for both parties because if it's not profitable for the client then there's no point in working together and you'll just harm your reputation on and offline so i've got another 20 minutes until that last call so i'm going to sit outside for a bit because the sun is shining i just want to take a little 10 minute break outside and get away from the office um and then i'll check in with you guys with the last call of the day and then i have basically crossed off most of the things on my to-do list um, still do it with pen and paper old school style why because i like taking off those little boxes and i don't know i just i do so much on the computer and on the phone and stuff like that it just feels good to have something offline um to you know to do every single day but other than that i'm rambling on again like i said break time for 20 minutes i'll uh, check out the third business and the first meeting uh, the third meeting sorry the third business third meeting of the day and then you'll probably wrap up this video okay so now is meeting number three this person has not filled in the the, the form correctly and has not left um their budget so i'm not entirely sure if i should take this um Purely off curiosity, curiosity because I do like the way the website looks. It looks relatively high end. It's an e-commerce shop, so this will not be lead generation, but this will be direct sales. So uh, what the heck, let's just take the call and just see what we can make of it. Okay, so this is such a strange um, call because um, this person has got a plus 30 number, which is not UK based. Um, she has not left a budget and she has not given a surname so uh, the least effort possible put into this lead form um, and that is actually the only reason why I'm, I'm calling this person up because I am curious to see what the deal is other than that uh, from the looks of it it's not a right fit just because of the effort she's put in you know she's but you can tell she's not really serious about this but let's just see Okay, well, um, obviously, you know, you've clicked on my advertisement um, and you've filled out my uh, Calendly form, saw the website. Um, so we can just start there. We can talk about the website, uh, where you're currently at with social media, and then, um, you know, see if I can help you out with any issues you're, you're currently having. Okay, I understand. Um, what I do need to say is that we are an agency, so there's, there's actually 10 of us, it's not just me. Um, and we don't usually work 
mainly off of Upwork. What we do is um, we work mostly with uh, a PayPal or just by a, a main retainer uh, through bank uh, transfer. And uh, we, we work with a 90 day contracts. So we set up the contracts for 90 days. Um, and then within those 90 days, we work within, you know, whatever targets you try and... Okay, so, I mean, uh, so you know what you're doing. So is there any uh, proposal uh, uh, that you can send me an email? Um, I could, or we can just discuss it right now. You know, there's nothing that a proposal can say that I can't say to you now on the phone. Oh, that was such a strange call. That was, I had... He started talking about Upwork. I see my profile on Upwork and booked a call with me, um, which is unexpected because, um, I don't know, I just assumed everyone that books a call with me comes through um, comes through the Facebook ads and that people that see my pro profile on Upwork just send me a message on Upwork. So, uh, very strange situation. Um, basically, this guy, he doesn't want... So, the, the, he didn't even want sales. He doesn't, it's like the whole project isn't even about the ROAS, he basically wants to find, um, he's got like, I'm, I'm not even sure how many products he said, I think it was 20 or 30 different types of products on the store and he wants to find out what products um, fit his target or, or the target countries and audience that he wants to target, you know, which products actually fit that audience best. Um, so it's quite an interesting one. Um, I'll probably throw a few snippets because the camera did die. I'll throw a few snippets of the Loom uh, conversation, uh, which, like I said, is mainly for the mastermind. But I'll throw a few snippets of that in this um, YouTube video as well. Um, just a few little things that I thought was very uh, interesting. Like he tried to, after five minutes, he tried to get me to send him an email with a proposal. So I immediately said, no, well, I, I, there's nothing that I can say in a proposal that I can't just say on the phone right now. Um, I suggested because he's US based or he's sorry not US based but because his, his, his entire business in the US I suggested a thousand US a month and he said oh that is very affordable and my first um, reaction you know, in my, mentally was oh shit I could have asked for much much more there um, but yeah strange like it's not a done deal definitely not um, it's, it's not a lost deal either let's just see what happens in the next two weeks um, like I said I do need to do a bit more digging into this client. It was a bit of a strange call. Um, he's definitely got the budget, he's got the money, he's got the patience, he understands it's a long-term thing. Um, basically, I just automatically assume that people want results quickly, so I said, you know, we do require a 90-day commitment, and he was like, well, what results can you get in 90 days? You know, it's it's something that needs to be on you know, over the span of a much longer period, which um, I thought was good to hear. Basically, he is patient, and he is in it for the long run, he doesn't want to make a quick book and then be off with it. Um, so a lot of positives, a lot of negatives as well, but um, let's just see, I'm going to send them, um, basically I did make sure he confirmed that we are on a call for exactly two weeks time, which is the 11th of July, and I made sure that he is willing to work together, I'm not going to send an email if he has not verbally agreed to work together, um, but other than that, that is the fifth call done, funny because I expected the least from that call and actually got the most out of it. Um, but guys, this is a long video, so I'm going to wrap this video up here. Let me know in the comments down below if you actually liked the vlog. I've um, been doing a lot of informative videos lately, so it was good for me as well to just, you know, freshen things up with a vlog. Um, you know, brings me back to the old days when I used to do this uh, like three, four times a week. But uh, yeah, like guys, like I said, like the video, comment down below uh, if you liked it and what you'd like to see for my channel next. Subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.